All right, if you've been playing ranked Brawl Stars for the second season now, there might be a few things that you've noticed that could be frustrating you the same as me, especially if you are playing solo. So I want to recommend five changes that I would like to see in ranked Brawl Stars. And I'd love to see if you guys agree with me and think that these changes would be really, really useful. So starting off with number one, when you're in the ranked lobby and you're selecting your brawlers, I think it would be really good if there was an announcer for the modifier, the map, and who wins the coin flip. Now, I know there's a lot of visual that's going on with the screen, and you can click to see what the modifier details are, and you can clearly see from the image, and you can also click on the map. But you've got to imagine there's a lot of people that are probably playing on the sofa they've got noise and stuff around them maybe they're not fully paying attention maybe they just don't quite look at that point and i'm still seeing a lot of people especially all the way up to mythic and i am in games now on this second season where people are in legendary in my lobbies and they're still making mistakes in terms of the type of brawlers that they're picking for the modifier of the map that we've got selected so i do think an announcer would be really good and when I think about an announcer, I think about Halo. So when you would like start a game, it'd be like Slayer or Oddball or whatever. Um, that was a really bad uh, impression of that. But you get my point. Like I think it'd be really good if it just told you the map and like the modifier so that you knew what it, what it was just from the sound. So if you're not necessarily paying attention, the sound cue will let you know, okay, it's on this map. If you start getting familiar with the maps, it's on this modifier and we've just lost the coin flip. So I know that this is just a small change, maybe something that doesn't get implemented. But I do think that there are certain times, especially even when I'm playing, when my attention is being drawn elsewhere and I'm like, oh, what was the modifier? And then I've kind of already selected my brawler. So I can sometimes be guilty of it as well. I do think this would be a really cool change slash addition. Let me know what you think about my first recommendation. My second one is that I do think it would be quite nice if there was recommended brawlers for the map and mode. Now, I know that potentially Supercell might not want to do this because it could be a really, really subjective um, point of view in terms of what's good and what's bad. And also, it might, might not be taken into consideration the type of brawlers that you face. So you could pick a brawler that's not very good for the map and the mode but they're a really good counter to maybe two of the brawlers that the enemy team has selected. So I know and appreciate there is a lot of nuance. I just think it would be quite cool if they were grouped up into categories for the map and the mode that was selected, just for people, especially all the way up to Mythic, where they might not necessarily be aware or they're not following like guides or tier lists or anything. So they're, not, they're just not quite in tune with what might be a good map. So for example, if you're on a really wide map and it's time detonation, and you probably don't want to be playing someone like Ems, or you probably don't want to be playing someone like Sandy, because although they'll be good for the start of the match, they're going to be really, really crap once, obviously, the whole map opens up. And it's just little things like that, I think, that would be quite useful if there was a recommendation for brawlers for the map and the mode. And I appreciate that would probably be quite a bit of work and would need updating on a regular basis. Um, but I do think it would definitely help for some of our newer uh, players. My next recommendation, my third one, is... I still keep seeing a lot of people picking up level 9 rulers with no gadgets, no star powers or no gears, or no star powers, but they have gadgets and vice versa. This might not happen as much when you hit legendary, but certainly all the way up to mythic, I am seeing it. And I think it's quite frustrating that it does feel like a bit of a pay-to-win method, because you can have a couple of brawlers that are level 9 that, that don't have their their gears or they don't have their gadgets or star powers and let's be honest it does cost a lot of coins free to play players are going to take a really long time to get you know at least 10 brawlers with you know fully maxed out star powers gadgets and gears and that sort of stuff and also i do think that certain star powers are better in certain situations and for you not to have both of them and you've only got one sometimes people might even still just come in with the only one star power they've got for example a really good one might be kit or uh, miko where they come in with their star power where kit has a uh, star power where he gets more power from power cubes that's not even a modifier at the moment there's no power cubes in rank so that is just a completely dead star power or for example miko does more damage to non um 
brawlers, which you could say, all right, well, if there's a Jesse or if there's, you know, something that provides a unit that's not a brawler, then that could be useful. But it's pretty niche, let's be honest. So I just feel like it does feel very paid to win because you will go into ranked and it, maybe there's a brawler that you really, really want or you really, really like that's really good for this situation. They're level nine. You pick them. But you then you don't have no gears, no gadgets, no star powers. And for anyone that plays this game, I know there's montages out there where people have managed to absolutely obliterate trophies to an extreme level without star powers, gadgets, and gears. Let's be honest, like I think we can all agree that if you don't have them, you are at a disadvantage. I think that is a fair statement to make. And this kind of leads me on to my next point as well. So when you're in the character or brawler selection mode sometimes people want to swap with you um and it's not very helpful if i don't know what gadgets star powers or gears that they have so they might want to swap with me and i know that the brawler that, that they want to give me i don't have very good star powers uh or gadgets or gears or maybe i don't have any for them but i have got them level nine and they're trying to swap with me but but they don't know what i've got either so most of the time i usually don't want to trade because i don't know what they've got they don't actually know what i've got and so if we swap we could be at a disadvantage now i think you can swap back i must admit i've literally never accepted a trade especially in solo because of that reason i don't know what they've got and it's it's not obviously good for me to be able to swap and also i'd have to have a pretty good memory because i'm pretty sure um that you don't see what you've got when the trade is trying to happen you'll see it once you've made the trade but not really a big fan of that i think it would be nice to have some sort of like information that shows you what it is that they've got versus what it is that you've got so you both kind of know whether the trade is actually worth it because you know you're literally hoping that that person is even good with the brawler that's like a big enough risk as it is but then to make a trade and they have maybe not as good a setup as what you have then the trade just feels really bad right so and if you do it last minute you might not be able to trade back assuming that you can and stuff like that so I just think there needs to be more information when it comes to quickly trading um, other brawlers, especially from a solo point of view. And then my last one is I'm starting to see Master League players um, in the Season 2 now. So people that have clearly got really, really good, reached Masters. Now, that's not to say that you can't beat a Master player, and I'm not 100% sure whether single or solo Master players are just getting... Um, brought into the games or whether they're they're teamed up with other mythic players and stuff but i did notice it after i got to around gold that there were some master players coming through i personally think that to reset a master player assuming that that is happening all the way back to bronze i don't think it's healthy for ranked i know that the player pool might be less if say like masters let and legendary players are grouped up together and then because those players have done so good the last season, they should just get all the previous awards for free. And basically their lobby start from like legendary onwards. I don't, it doesn't feel fair that a master player the previous season can match up with a legendary and a mythic player and you're all scrambled into uh, one group when you're playing it. It feels, you definitely can tell the skill difference between a master player and even a legendary and definitely a mythic player. So... I just feel like this is quite unhealthy and toxic for the game, especially from a solo point of view. And I really don't know the ins and outs of whether they are grouped up. So you're never going to see a master if they're on their own and they've just managed to group up with a mythic player and maybe a legendary player. I'm not really too sure what the nuances is around that, but it doesn't feel good and it makes it a lot harder. And it can be a little bit deflating to go up against a master player and almost know you're probably going to lose so example like you could go up against a master uh, player a legendary player and a mythic player and then you three are all mythics that that has happened like i've absolutely seen that and it's very frustrating so it's just a bit of feedback from me those are the five main picks that i have if i had a sixth bonus change that i'd like i actually do think in ranked it would be nice if you as a player could turn off other people's emotes it's really a little bit like kind of infuriating rage inducing when people are just constantly doing the thumbs down or stuff like sometimes you make a mistake sometimes you know something doesn't go quite right 
I, I think it's unhealthy. It makes me think about League of Legends. If any of you that have played League of Legends or are aware of it, I do feel that game is extremely toxic. But the nice thing about League of Legends, especially from a solo point of view, is that you are able to turn off any chat, which obviously you can't do in Brawl, and you can actually turn off all you know pings and emotes and all that sort of stuff. And I think that you should be able to do that in Brawl Stars so that you can just focus on the game. If you make a mistake and you've still got enough time to correct it, you can just crack on and you get that less rage-inducing moments where people just kind of are annoying you. So I do I do think that's quite frustrating. And if I had a bonus pick, that would be ever changed. But look, that is my technically six changes that I would make to Brawl Stars ranked. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Would you want these changes to make? Are there things that you thought of? that I haven't thought of that you think that could be added or changed? And do you agree or disagree with what I've said? So really be good to get your thoughts on that. This is Sully. I'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Goal! This ain't my first rodeo. In your face!